Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks, and in today's lesson, I'm going to respond to a request that I get frequently from my viewers. How to automatically add a time and a date stamp whenever we edit or update a record. I'm going to show you how we can write a very short VBA module, uh, a VBA macro. VBA stands for Visual Basic for Application. It's going to be called an Event Handler Macro. What we want to be able to do is that whenever we make a change to one of our employee records, we want to have a date and a timestamp. And many people will start out by using the now function. The problem with the now function is it's a volatile function. So whenever we use the now function, it will pick up the system clock date and time. So as you can see, that's not going to work. Neither will using these keyboard shortcuts that many people know, control semicolon, which indeed applies a date stamp, or control shift semicolon, which applies a timestamp. You see, they're not going to be automated. So here's the result that we want to achieve. Whenever we go through and change a record. So for example, I want to add the last name in here for the employee named Jack. So I'm going to select it, go up here into the formula bar, and I want to add in a last name. And when I hit enter, you see how the time and the date stamp is automatically applied to that record. So let's just say that the, the name was incorrect. This time I'll edit it inside the cell. It's going to automatically update. Now you see uh, the system, I'm still at the, at the 46 minute uh, point. So I could also go through in, in either case and use the keyboard shortcut F9 to uh, recalculate. But it, in the program that I use to record these videos, Camtasia Studio, F9 has a different application. So pay attention over here when I come over here on the formulas tab of the ribbon and I click calculate now. You see how those time and dates updated? But you see when I use the macro, each of the records has the uh, the date and the time that I actually changed it. So over here, I'll make a change to Larry. This time I'll use the F2 keyboard shortcut to edit inside the cell. And there you go. The macro took care of it, and it did not affect any change in the other records. All right, you're going to say, how do you work this magic? Over here is the code. So if you wish to pause your recording at this point and take a screenshot, this is the coding that we're going to use for our event handler macro. Notice that what we're doing is we're uh, referring to with our if then and if statement, we're referring to a variable which gets added in automatically. The name target is the variable that we're going to use. So if the target column is one, in other words, the first column is letter A, then what do we want to do? We want to have this event handler macro add in the date and the time. In other words, change the value for the target in this row in the second column. Now, the other two lines have been added to uh, prevent the macro from entering into an endless loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to take my original list of employees. I'll make a copy. I'll open up a brand new workbook with the keyboard shortcut Control N. And I'll come over here and I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control V to paste them. And I want to enlarge both of these columns. I'll put in here Update It. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to write the macro, and actually to make this uh, a little bit more challenging, why don't I enter in two additional columns? So we're going to move this over. So now I'm going to be referring to the target in column three so I can update the value in column four. Now I'm using Excel 2007 as you can see over here and I want to make sure that I have the developer tab added into the ribbon. This is exactly the same procedure as we will use in Excel 2010. Over here in Visual Basic we have our Project Explorer over here. Now I'm using, let's see, workbook number 10. What's going to be important is I want to put it into this worksheet in uh, book 10. So you see the macro that I had in my original workbook is over here. 
an event handler macro, the one that we're using, we want to place it in the current worksheet. Not the workbook, the worksheet. So if I double click over here, now I can begin my process by using the drop down menu on the left. I want to have this VBA event handler apply to this worksheet and this is the type of event that I want to change. So I'm going to choose change over here. Now you see uh, VBA automatically adds in these two lines of code. It's going to be referring to this variable called the target. So I have the beginning line and then the ending of this little macro. So let's hit enter a few times just to add in a little space. And I like to indent so you can see how this will work. We begin with if. Now notice that when I type, I like to type in lowercase because uh, the macro or the VBA language or the coding will automatically tell me if I typed it incorrectly by capitalizing it. So I want to refer to the target. And here's a great uh, tip. If you don't get a menu automatically when you type in a variable, use control and the space bar to bring up a list of the possible uh, ways that we can write this macro. So target over here, and I can just type it so I get it, hit tab to move over. Put a period, column, and again, you notice that autocomplete. I want to say if the target column is equal to 3. Now remember, in this case, I'm referring over here to column C. Then I want to put in a then. Now notice that when I hit enter, you see the if and the then automatically were capitalized. Now one good best practice that, that I recommend that you do is make sure that you close off the if with an end if. So it's important that we match the pairs. And again, notice that when I hit the enter that it gets automatically initially capitalized. So here's what I want to have happen. So if target column is 3, then I want the cells. And again, I use the control space bar, cells, and I don't want cell, I want cells. And in a left and a right parentheses, I want to refer to the target row. So target uh, dot row, and use tab comma, which is going to separate the argument. So I want to have it in the target row, but in the fourth column. So now, what value do I want to change? So period value equals date plus time. And again, notice that I'm using lowercase. When I hit enter, you see it initially capitalizes. So it tells me that my coding that I added in is correct. Now, the macro will work just fine as it is, but I'm going to recommend that you add in this matching pair of arguments. Again, I'll use control space bar, and I want to type in application. Yeah, I'll use tab. What I want to say is I want to have application period enable events. And again, this, is, this will save you so much time when you use that control space bar. I want to turn this off, so to turn it off I want to make it false to begin with, and then down here what I want to do after this line of code, I want to do the same thing. Application, tab, period, enable events, tab, equals true. So I want to turn it back on. All right, now let's test this out. So we'll come over here and I'll put in a change to this record. I'll come up here and I'll put in Denny Dennison. And there you go. I have my time and my date stamp. All because I learned how to create an event handler macro. Again, remember the key element, I'll use Control R to bring up the Project Explorer, is that we store this event handler in the current worksheet, the active worksheet. And we take advantage of the drop down uh, menus that we get over there. So that's a great tip. I hope that you enjoy it. And just before I leave, I invite you to visit my new online secure shopping cart. HTTP and it's going to be shop.thecompanyrocks.com. You can see all of the uh, products that I offer including my new series called Master Excel in Minutes, the first releases for pivot tables. Excel 2003, 2007, 2010, either a DVD-ROM or as a downloadable product and I will look for you in the next lesson.